Hi everybody, my name is Connor Musumano and I am the co-founder and CEO of OpenBCI. Um, so, um, you may be curious what I'm holding in my hands. Uh, it is a 3D printed EEG headset. So what I'm gonna demonstrate right now is the ability to put on a 3D printed headset and see eight channels of brain activity in under 30 seconds. Sorry. 35 seconds. <laughs> so this is the OpenBCI software. Yeah. It's written in processing, which is a Java-based uh, Java creative coding framework. And this is a modified version of the code that's got a bunch of images in the background for doing the presentation. Sometimes this crashes it, but it didn't. All right. So right now, what you are looking at is eight channels of my brain activity. And obviously, if I move around, there's a ton of movement noise that is introduced into the system. But what I'm going to do now is stay rather still and show you some cool stuff. So uh, channels one and two, which are the gray and the purple channel on top, they are mapped to the nodes that are on my forehead. So if I start blinking my eyes, you can actually see those potential spikes. And if I grip my teeth, you can see that really big EMG artifact. And that's a muscle artifact. That's not brain activity. The two things I've just showed you are muscle activity. Uh, so I can do fun things like, uh, hang on, let me scale the graph for this. Bird scan. So I can wink with my left eye, wink with my right eye, wink with my left eye, and you can see that toggle in channels one and two. So. That's the zigzag. Um, and so now, blow this back up. What you'll see on the right here is, um, this is a little visualizer to uh, take a single channel. So it's looking at channel four, and it's taking the, the real-time microvolt value uh, that's been averaged over a short window, so about uh, a fifth of a second. And so what I can do is I can, I can grip my teeth and I can push that outward. So each time I grip my teeth, I can drive that bar up. And I can, I can ease my way into it, almost like I have a dial or a, or a potentiometer, if you will. So let me push it out real quick. And you can see on the graph on the left, you can see the, the microvolt kind of expanding in amplitude over time. So now I'm going to demonstrate a little zigzag back and forth with my jaw in channels three and four. So, I don't know about you guys, but when I see this, my mind just starts racing about the implications of being able to control things, uh, you know, maybe quadriplegics who no, no longer have access to their lower limbs and body to be able to move interfaces, you know, communicate when they, when they couldn't. Um, but, oh yeah, before I finish, let me show you brain waves so you know that this thing can actually do it. Um, so, on, on the right here, we have an FFT plot, which is a fast forward here transform. Channels five through eight are mapped to my visual cortex. And so if I, if I close my eyes, my visual cortex will relax as a result of no longer having to process tons of stimuli, colors, shapes, higher level patterns for my environment. And then all my neurons kind of start firing together as something like I like to call it a brain beat, basically. If you start to um, uh, remove stimuli from regions of your brain, they'll, they'll return to these default frequencies. And the same thing happens for the motor cortex if you relax your body. Um, so if I stop talking and close my eyes, you'll see a sinusoidal pattern emerge mainly in channels five through eight. And you know, you'll see basically 10 waveforms between any one of those one second time domains. So between two gray lines, you'll see 10 waves. And then you should also see a spike at a above the number 10 on the FFT, which is corresponding to a 10 hertz signal. So, see if I can do it. 
of pressure.
I love neurotech thing and, and going to the coolest event that you could be at at the time. Uh, and when we were there, uh, I was at the Open BCI booth and I was demoing the first prototype of the Ultra Cortex. So I had this 3D printed EEG headset that didn't actually have electrodes in it. It was just a skeleton, but it was a concept. Um, most people were walking by saying, no, oh, cool, whatever, 3D printed, cool. Uh, but then this guy, Gall, uh, comes along. So Gall is being pushed through the conference in his wheelchair um, by his best friend who, uh, uh, so Gall comes along and he sees our table and his face just lights up. He just like, you know, you could just see the tears in his eyes and the expression on his face. He couldn't say it because he had ALS, but he was just like astounded by the fact that this technology existed and he hadn't known about it. So Gall is an amazing story because Gall uh, has ALS, was a former computer scientist programmer, and now he's basically hacking his way to continue to communicate with the world. So he develops, he started a company called click to speak where he has designed his own UX, his own wireframes, his own keyboard for using eye communication to communicate with the world. Um, and so he is on an ongoing basis optimizing his own system as his body start, continues to fade. So, you know, we are, we are really interested in helping people like Gall um, not directly helping, yes directly helping, but also inspiring people to get involved in this at an earlier age, to learn about these technologies so that ultimately, you know, this is maybe not correctable, but um, uh, complementable. So you, to, to supplement the ability to speak with technologies like the evolution of OpenBCI. So we just applied for a grant to take the ultra cortex. Um, not necessarily going to get it, but our proposal is to take the ultra cortex, scan Gall's head, design him a custom EEG and EMG headset, and give him this basically electrical API that he can work with over time to use as, you know, hopefully a communication tool. And the idea is to um, look at the EMG signals that still exist, because 90% of ALS patients actually maintain some level of motor control before they die. So you think about the entire ALS subset. I was able to control this presentation with EMG signals, not, not brain signals. Um, if 90% of people with ALS still have motor control over muscles, why, why tap into the brain if something more powerful and easy to listen to exists? So we, look, we listen to his EMG. We give him this, this communication device. Um, and over time, we, we make correlations between the EMG and the EEG of his motor cortex. And we actually make, we classify his muscular intention with EEG, and we begin to build a sample set of data that now is just his EEG responding to the system, but he has you know months to years to build this data set. So that's the idea. Hopefully, we get the grant. Um, but so you know, going to Open BCI, you know, I, I think that that's just one example. There are a number of examples. So EMG can be used for prosthetics, for um, looking at ADHD, looking at uh, depression diagnosing these things, but also maybe looking at uh, supplements to medicine. So using neurofeedback as opposed to uh, taking a pill. So at OpenBCI, we just actually launched our second Kickstarter campaign. So our company, OpenBCI, has been entirely crowdfunded. Uh, we haven't taken any investments. We've been purely supported by people, bottom up. Um, and uh, Yanni told me to make this joke, and I think it's a pretty good joke, so I'm going to make it. If we hit 130000 before the end of tonight, I'll buy all the beer. <laughs> um, so, so OpenBCI, um, we basically, at our company, we have three pillars that we try and stick to. So the first is developing really good technology. So we believe that the fact that we're open source, entirely open source, is going to enable us to develop our technology better and faster than any other company. And you know, over the course of the last two years, we've, we've come out of nowhere, and you know, we're really disrupting, for lack of a better word, Ken, uh, this space of neurotechnology by making this technology very, very cheap, very cost effective, and also, you know, the fact that anyone can jump in, and all of the material is there to go in and change the system, modify the system, optimize it for your own research needs. So, the first pillar, technology. The second pillar is learning. So. You know, at OpenBCI, we put equal amount of resources into the actual development of the technology and also ensuring that people know how the technology works. You know, what are the components? What are the building blocks of an EEG device? You know, Joel, my, my background is in fine arts and civil engineering, and 
and somehow I ended up in EEG. Um, and my business partner, Joel, is a self-taught electrical engineer who has a background in jewelry making. So we, in many ways, should not be doing this, but we are anyway. Um, and, you know, I think... Don't put that in the grant. Yeah, don't put that in the grant. We won't put that in the grant. But the, actually, one thing I want to show you is, you know, a huge impetus of, of why we do what we do is, is this right here. So my introduction to brain-computer interfacing was a tutorial that somebody put online and took the time to document very thoroughly. And, you know, I found this when I was in my MFA program. This is how to hack toy EEGs. It's to strap an Arduino to a $100 EEG device, get brain waves. So I did this in a day, I replicated this tutorial, and, like, it was love at first sight. I just, like, from that point forward, never stopped. Um, and, you know, in honor of this, basically, you know, the fact that somebody took the time to teach me this, you know, and didn't put a patent around didn't wrap it up and close it off from the world. Uh, you know, that's why we do what we do, because we believe that innovation happens fastest when people share knowledge. So learning is the second pillar. The third pillar is our community. So, you know, as, as Amy was saying about iWire, you know, everything that we do depends on our community. So we, you know, more than 50% of the technological innovation that's happened at OpenBCI has taken, out, taken place outside of OpenBCI's headquarters. So we have people constantly chiming in on our forum, giving us feedback on these electrodes work better. You know, this headset design doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, there's a here's a quick fix to the buffer of your radio, and now your data latency is going to be much much faster. You know, and so you know this not only does this improve the technological innovation, but you know these people are all innovating and and inspiring the future me's to get involved in this space. And that's why we put effort into the third building, which is community. So here's Chip. He is a great example of uh, you know, what Neurotech X stands for and what OpenBCI stand for, stands for. He works for this company, you know, does private research, but then he has this blog called the EEG Hacker where he just posts, just the, does the coolest hacks where he hacks, you know, uses the OpenBCI board, mind-controlled robot, mind-controlled helicopter, mind-controlled floating shark, um, and just like, is just relentless about publishing this content. So he has our highest electric karma score. So one way we kind of like, we keep track of engagement with the community by giving people this kind of meaningless score of electric karma. The only thing it does is give you bragging rights. Um, and so Chip is actually leading the Open PCI community ahead of me and my business partner. Um, and here you probably see some familiar faces up here. Uh, where is Yannick? Yannick, you're slacking, man. Come on. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's that's pretty much the end of my presentation. But I guess to, to sum it up, you know, uh, it's been just an amazing experience from start to now of, of you know kind of leading over BCI and watching uh, people buy into the mission and understand that uh, you know a lot of what we do and a lot of the things that we turn away uh, for the community. To, to stay open source and to, to be bottom up invested have really actually like you know it's pushed us forward and people really buy into it and believe in it. It's amazing. It's amazing to see things like Neurotech X emerge and just you know the the energy, the positive energy, the enthusiasm, the, the sense of collaboration and kind of this uh, we're all in this together. It's just unbelievable. So thank you very much and I'd be happy to chat if you're done.